Welcome back to another video in the Macbeth Bible. This time the quotation is, uh, Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. Uh, which is Lady Macbeth's advice to Macbeth. Uh, so let's begin, as usual, with some interpretation of the language. Well, obviously we have the simile here, and you always want to use the correct terminology because that gets you marks. And then we have the metaphor here, be a serpent. Well, we could go into lots of language analysis here, and, and I will, because it's going to um, show you how to get so much detail out of one quotation. So we're now going into language form and structure, um, and let me show you. So first, we might associate flower with the feminine, female qualities. And who is giving this advice but Lady Macbeth, who you remember has said, Come you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here. So she has asked to become like a man, and at, now that she feels like a man, she sees her husband as like a woman. She's pointing out to him his womanly qualities. Um, now, you could argue that that's not a very um, uh, safe way to deal with a warrior. Um, however, she knows her husband really well because she appeals then to his warrior side with the metaphor. Uh, you could go a little deeper here. A simile is a weaker form of description because it only says something is like something else. But the metaphor is, if you like, a more robust, a more masculine, if you like, um, form of description because it says something is. And I use feminine and masculine here. Um, not as a statement of fact, but as a way of investigating um, the relationship between the female Lady Macbeth and the male uh, Macbeth in this context. Okay, but now we can go straight to this idea of serpent rather than snake or scorpion. Remember Macbeth says, oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Um, he, uh, uh, Lady Macbeth could easily have chosen that language, but she takes this because it is an illusion uh, to Genesis um, in the Bible, and you should remember the story of how uh, Satan comes in the guise of the serpent to, take, uh, to tempt Adam and Eve. And so this is a clear association with evil and hell. So far I've introduced you to some vocabulary which you're going to use, it will always be relevant. Uh, any discussion of evil will always have a Christian basis in a Shakespeare play. So Genesis will always be relevant. Uh, you will always need to be able to understand the difference between metaphor and simile. And you've learned that metaphor is a more powerful technique than a simile because it's more precise. It says something is something else. It kind of demands more of the imagination. And then this discussion of masculinity and femininity and the roles in... Uh, Lady Macbeth and Macbeth's relationship, um, where Lady Macbeth becomes increasingly masculine and inc accuses her husband increasingly of being feminine. Okay, and then I've uh, related this quotation to Genesis. So this is between texts and the context in which they are written. Uh, so we're going to add here this idea, the reference is intertextual, and use that vocabulary. Um, you will automatically be telling the examiner, please give me the top marks, I understand this play intimately, and I have the academic vocabulary to prove it. So if you'd like more, don't forget to subscribe, and good luck in your revision.